Hello, and welcome to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I want to talk about the process that I went through to migrate from MailChimp over to ConvertKit. Now, I've been using ConvertKit for a couple of years now, but I do get asked quite often, you know, how do you switch? Because it can be a really daunting process. If, like me, you have a lot of subscribers, email forms where people can sign up and subscribe, if you have a lot of automation for things like sales funnels, nurture sequences, post-sale follow-ups, things like that, then moving all of that from one system to another can be a big, scary process. So I hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Now let's kick off with why did I even decide to switch? It was a number of years ago, and I had been using MailChimp for about five or six years at the time. Overall, really good product, was pretty happy with it. But at the time, they were making some changes and they were going from being not just an email marketing tool to actually offering a lot more, you know, helping people with their websites, landing pages, uh, social ads, um, ad spend, that type of thing. And so I just felt, look, I want to use a tool that's just first and foremost really good for email. And I don't want one of these everything systems that does too much. I just want one tool that is, is good for me and my business. And ConvertKit markets themselves uh, to creators like me, people who produce content like this on YouTube, people who have a blog, a podcast, and people who sell sort of information products and services. So I thought, well, I am very much the target market for a tool like ConvertKit. I'd been aware of the service for a while. And so the stars kind of aligned. I thought, you know what, I'm not completely happy with MailChimp. ConvertKit looks like the better way to go long term. So I'm going to make the switch. Now, the two systems are slightly different. MailChimp has its own way of doing things. ConvertKit is slightly different. And so switching over is a bit like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It doesn't really work that easy. So the biggest piece of advice I have at the top of this video is to take your time and plan the migration as thoroughly and as detailed as you can. And I'm gonna show you how I did that now. Here I am inside my MailChimp account. And one of the biggest differences between MailChimp and ConvertKit that you need to account for is that with MailChimp, you can set up multiple audiences. An audience is basically like a list of subscribers. So I had my uh, Paul Miners newsletter and my consulting newsletter, which is more clients I'm working with. Uh, whereas in ConvertKit, your entire account is just one big list. You don't set up different lists. Now, how we organize people is similar to, uh, uh, to MailChimp. So in MailChimp, if I go to my settings here, if I go under manage contacts, you can set up different groups, segments, and tags. And so you can see at the time, I used MailChimp groups to organize things like the uh, different products people had purchased, resources and lead magnets people had downloaded. I had various sort of e-commerce and pipe drive related groups as well. So using these groups, you can organize people into different buckets or categories so that you can send the correct email to the correct person. And with ConvertKit, it's really similar. I've made a video about how I use ConvertKit before, but as you'll see on this right-hand column, I use a lot of tags to show the, again, the resources, the lead magnets. Here are my main newsletter, newsletter tags. These are actually basically what I use in place of lists. So this one newsletter tag is basically like a list. This is all the people on my newsletter list. Uh, but I use these tags to show these are the things that people have purchased, downloaded, maybe things they've been pitched, and so on. But that's one of the first big changes to wrap your head around is that with ConvertKit, you don't have multiple lists like you do with MailChimp. Uh, so you're just going to have to think about how do you organize people into different ways um, if you are going to be bringing them all into ConvertKit. And a good way to do that is to map everything out on a spreadsheet. So you can see here, I have this tab here called Groups to Tags. So this column I use to map out all of the MailChimp groups that I needed to bring across, things like the lead magnets, e-commerce, and uh, products that people had purchased. And then I show in this column the tag that I was gonna create uh, in its place in ConvertKit. So I had here product purchase guidelines, maps to purchase guidelines. I then went through a similar process when working out what forms on my website needed to be updated. So on this tab, I listed out the, uh, the name of the form, what WordPress page and the URL of the live page where that form appeared. So I could easily, I just had a simple checklist of every single form that I needed to update. And then if I scroll along here, 
Uh, I then had some notes related to, does the form link to a particular thank you page? Is there some kind of resource or lead magnet associated with the form? Uh, the list, the MailChimp list that the form would add people to. So again, my, my pool miners or my consulting newsletter. And then finally, and this is kind of the most important part, the new ConvertKit tag that would needed to be added to a subscriber if somebody uh, opted in through that form. And then again, I had a similar process for mapping out all of the automated email sequences that I needed to move across as well. So I had a, a bunch of uh, primary workflows related to different sales funnels and uh, nurture sequences um, for pitching different products that I offer. I had some service emails related to, you know, um, sending people an email when they when they purchase one of the products, and then various sequences related to lead magnets and resources that I uh, offer as well. So similar to before, I listed everything out, every sequ sequence that I needed to bring across. And in this form, I listed out, how does this sales sequence or automation get triggered? What does the subscriber need to do to start this automation? For example, this book summary email sequence, which sends people a free book summary and sends them some useful content, is triggered when the tag resource BS is added to the subscriber. So earlier when I said the best thing you can do first is to plan out your migration, this is the process that I actually took quite a while to just map everything out in terms of just listing the forms, the groups, the tags, and the email sequences that all needed to be migrated. This is before I touched anything in ConvertKit or set up anything. I just started planning everything out. Now, once I had finished planning everything out, I actually used ConvertKit's migration service where you can actually engage their team and they can help you to migrate the forms, the email sequences, and actually move across your subscribers as well. So if you find this process really daunting like I did at the time, uh, I highly recommend this service. You can sign up here. They actually match you with an expert on their team, somebody that does this kind of thing all the time, somebody who's already familiar with MailChimp and moved people into ConvertKit before. So they have a few migration options. Uh, I will put the link to this page in the description of this video. I went through this process with the ConvertKit team and I have to say like it made the entire process a lot easier, um, letting them kind of handle the process for me. I still recommend um, preparing a bit of a spreadsheet like this, which maps out the forms, the sequences, the tags and things that need to be moved. Because I, what I then did is I took all this, I passed it over to the migration expert and said, here's everything. Uh, I gave them logins to my website, to my ConvertKit account, and they had everything they needed to then go and set everything up. It took a couple of weeks because my account was pretty big. I had, again, just a lot of forms and things to move across. But once the ConvertKit team had done their job switching everything over, and, and that was really the heavy lifting of the project, just creating all, the, all those forms, creating all of those sequences, copying and pasting all the email text into new sequences, it takes a long time. So having the ConvertKit team do that was a massive time saver. But once they did that, the next step was to start testing. So I literally went through every single form put my email in, made sure it did the correct, did what it was supposed to. Maybe it was supposed to trigger an email or send me some free download or some free resource. So again, take your time through this process, make sure you test all the forms, test your email sequences, make sure they get triggered at the correct times. It was only once I had finished testing everything thoroughly and I was confident that everything worked as it should, that I then started to update all of the forms on my website. Because the forms, that's how people get onto your email list. So the way I looked at it is, I'm gonna take off all the old MailChimp forms and I'm gonna put the new ConvertKit forms in their place. And that was a process that I did. I didn't, I didn't leave that to the ConvertKit team, although I think they can do that for you. Um, I actually took that on myself so that I was putting the correct form on the correct page. So then just as somebody came to my website and they subscribed to my list or they opted in for a free download, they were then going onto my ConvertKit list, not my old MailChimp list. With all of my forms switched to the new ConvertKit forms, essentially the migration is now kind of half done because everyone new coming in is going into the ConvertKit account. The final step was then to take all of my existing subscribers from MailChimp and move them across to ConvertKit. And so you can do that by viewing these individual groups. And then if you click on the list of contacts for each group, you'll see everyone in that group and then you can use the export button here to download a CSV of everyone in that group. 
So from there, it was just a simple process of importing that CSV to ConvertKit. And when you import the CSV, you can choose to add a tag to everyone that you're importing. So in my case, if I was exporting everyone in this seven day productivity plan group, I would be importing them to the uh, purchase 7DPP uh, tag here instead. So the group was clearly mapped to a tag. Everyone in that list in MailChimp has now just been added to ConvertKit with the tag. Pretty straightforward, really. A useful step I took along the way was as I was exporting each group, I would then tag the exported subscribers back in MailChimp with this migrated newsletter tag. That was really handy because then at the very end of the migration process, once I'd gone through every single MailChimp group, I did a search of my MailChimp account and I looked at, are there any subscribers left that do not have the migrated tag? Because those are people that have potentially been missed. Maybe they just weren't in any of my groups. So I then just took all those people and moved them across as well. And that's how I made sure that there was nobody left behind back in MailChimp. And then finally, once everyone had moved across, I obviously had my forms and my email automation set up. When it came to sending my very next email newsletter, one of the things that I did is I just explained to everyone in my newsletter, hey, I've switched from MailChimp to ConvertKit. I actually shared a blog post explaining why I made the switch. And I just said, look, if anything, if you get some weird emails from me, if you get triggered into a, some sequence that you shouldn't be, please let me know so that I can try and fix that. I was just pretty transparent with the fact that I'd moved systems and there might be a few hiccups along the way. Fortunately, because I'd planned everything out, like I mentioned before, there weren't really any issues and uh, it was all actually a pretty smooth process. And so that is how I migrated from MailChimp to ConvertKit. As I mentioned, the big takeaway here is just to take your time and do all of that planning. If your account's a lot smaller than mine, if you don't have all the forms and the email automation that I do, this is probably gonna be a much quicker, simpler process for you. But if you have a big account, that is my big, big takeaway here is take your time planning everything that needs to move across and take your time testing everything once everything has been rebuilt, rebuilt on the ConvertKit side. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.